The 510K is a pre-market submission made to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, to demonstrate that a device to be marketed is at least as safe and effective, that is, substantially equivalent, to a legally marketed device described as predicate device. This process is named after Section 510K of the U.S. Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. Let's discuss a bit more about the 510K that is an FDA requirement to be fulfilled before marketing a medical device in the U.S. market. This submission process sounds logical as it provides assurance that the new device is substantially like an existing product already being marketed. Approval of this regulatory document before marketing of a newly introduced medical device acts as a stringent check for quality and compliance aiming to guarantee that only medical devices meeting high safety and efficacy standards are permitted for sale in the United States. To be precise, this procedure is beneficial for safety purposes and good public health practice. Whether you are an international manufacturer of a medical device or have a manufacturing facility in the United States of America, 510K approved products have several benefits including 1. Marketing in the U.S. market. The device can be marketed in the U.S. with claims that it has been reviewed and approved by the FDA. 2. Awareness about the U.S. market through predicate. Submitters compare their devices to one or more similar legally marketed devices, known as the predicate. Although recently cleared devices are often selected as predicates, any legally marketed device can serve as a reference. 3. Hinders substandard products in the market which is a benefit for both manufacturers slash distributors, as well as the general public. The 510K submission is through the eStar program described by the FDA as eStar is an interactive PDF form that guides applicants through the process of preparing a comprehensive medical device submission. You can download the latest version of the eStar PDF document from the website given in the comments section. As far as the downloading procedure is concerned, for Windows through Microsoft Edge, right-click on the link and save it on your computer. For Mac, press Ctrl Plus, click the link and download the linked file through Safari. In this presentation, we are describing version 5 of the eStar, and there are two types, namely non-in vitro diagnostic eStar and in vitro diagnostic eStar. Let us inform you what they are and which one you need to complete for the 510K submission of your product. To initiate the process, the selection of the right form is very important. The in vitro diagnostic eStar PDF form is for medical equipment or devices primarily intended for performing diagnostic tests on biological samples like blood, urine, and tissue outside the body. Examples are molecular diagnostic platforms and automated analyzers for body fluids. Whereas the non in vitro diagnostic eStar is for Device is not primarily intended for diagnostic testing but used for treatment, monitoring, or other medical purposes. Examples are surgical equipment, massagers, and x-ray machines. Now you know about the right farm to be submitted for your project. This was just for your information. It is quite possible that you do not need to submit 510K for marketing your product. For that one, you must check your product in the device classification. The 510K submission is based on the risks associated with the usage of the device. As such, the device need to be classified based on risks and type of usage. With respect to device classification based on associated risks, Food and Drug Administration of USA categorizes medical devices into three major groups. This classification is based on the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, Section 513. Class 1 has low to moderate risk managed through general controls. Class 2 poses moderate to high risk and is dealt with general control and special control. Class 3 devices are high-risk devices. They need general control and pre-market approval. A link describing in big detail these regulatory controls is in the comments section of this video. However, let us also discuss the general, special controls, and pre-market approval. General controls are federal food, drug, and cosmetic act regulatory requirements as outlined in sections 501, 502, 510, 516, 518, 519, and 520. General controls are the baseline and apply to all medical devices and not those exempted from regulations. The special control are specific to the device being marketed and include 1. Performance standards, 2. Post-market surveillance, 3. Patient registries, 4. Special labeling requirements, 5. Pre-market data requirements, 
6. Guidelines Pre-market approval is required for high-risk devices, as the general and special controls are insufficient to reasonably ensure safety. These devices support or sustain human life or prevent impairment of human health and may present a potentially unreasonable risk of illness or injury. Besides classification based on risks, there is also a need for product classification of your medical device. There are two ways to classify medical devices. One, your product classification database. The web address for the product classification database is in the comments section. The second one is in the device panel based on medical specialty. Please also see the web address in the comments section. We would like to share with you a demo of both these searches. First is the U.S. Food and Drug Administration Product Classification System. Let us use the example of Massager. Type Massager in the device box in the product classification box. There are several other boxes that you can fill based on the information available to you. This includes the review panel, submission type, product code, regulation number, and so on. When you hit search in the previous product classification system, it returns your results in this form. Here you have information about different types of massagers based on their risk classification manifested as device class. Keep in mind that it takes into consideration the genera, special controls, and pre-market approval if required. There is also a product code linked with the massager types. The device classification panel is different than the product classification and according to the US FDA, most medical devices can be classified by finding the matching description of the device in Title 21 of the Code of Federal Regulations, CFR, Parts 862 to 892. FDA has classified and described over 1,700 distinct types of devices and organized them in the CFR into 16 medical specialty panels, such as cardiovascular devices or ear, nose, and throat devices. Here we are discussing the example of a massager. The medical specialty is physical medicine. Clicking on this one will take you to the physical medicine section where you can find different types of massagers classified based on the Code of Federal Regulation 21. You can get more information from here. What next after medical device classification and accumulating all the requisite information that we discussed in this video? Classification of medical device follows with the preparation of 510K application and define the pathway either for pre-market notification 510K or pre-market approval. Here it is essential to take into consideration the Class 1 and 2 exemption, besides humanitarian device exemption. Now you are ready to download the eStar PDF template to fill out the application in an appropriate manner. This is a highly technical nature job, and you definitely need help from experts with prior experience or guidance from the FDA.